people are still falling for this. All right. Good evening, and welcome to tonight's invasion of the state's property, your mind. Our top stories tonight. Big Tech attempts to take down Italy's newly elected Prime Minister, Georgia Maloney, who was unfairly elected through what's called a democratic election. YouTube threatens to take down Russell Brand. Biden can't find a dead congresswoman for some reason. Nancy Pelosi's racism should be interpreted as equity. And World War III is coming your way. What can you expect? Why is it happening? And what are some of the great things that'll come from World War III? Stay tuned to find out. But first, in Iran, the authoritarian regime is facing tremendous backlash from the people it's oppressing. It all started to escalate when the state killed a 22-year-old woman for not wearing a face covering. Little did she know, the face coverings mandated by the state were in place for her protection. But nonetheless, when she decided to remove it anyway, the state decided to protect her further by killing her for it. And then the citizens decided to rise up through massive protests. The Iranian regime has since weaponized federal forces against citizens, shooting and killing dozens since the protests began. Nothing really funny about that. We didn't do any satire, as is. Iran's authoritarian regime has also been putting celebrities who speak out against the regime's policies into prison, along with at least 20 journalists. Luckily, I'm not one of those. The regime has justified the imprisonments by saying the celebrity's words pose a risk of inciting violence and riots. Sounds absolutely brutal, totalitarian, and unacceptable that they're doing that, doesn't it? For some in the Western Hemisphere who have functioning hemispheres of their brains, they've been asking, What's the difference between what Iran's regime is doing and what Biden's regime is doing? Well, on the surface, it might look like the tactics of weaponizing federal agencies against political opposition and citizens who speak out against them in order to silence them, while justifying it by saying their words could incite violence and riots that the Biden administration is doing, is the same as what Iran's totalitarian regime is doing. And that's because it is the same. But the difference in that sameness is that Iran's regime is already taking the steps of weaponizing the military against their citizens by shooting and killing them, which is several inches ahead of what the Biden administration is currently doing. So you can take solace by believing that could never happen here while we inch our way there. And if we allow ourselves to slowly arrive there, you'll have the peace of mind of acclimating along the way which will help you just go along with it while you have an obedient smile on your face. So there's really nothing to worry about. And in other news, Italy has a newly elected prime minister that the establishment doesn't control, Georgia Maloney. So we in the media are excited that we get to turn back to the Trump page in our playbook. Therefore, she's a far right fascist. <laughs> Feels nostalgic. I like it. Accordingly, in section 12, paragraph two of the same page in the playbook, big tech is to get involved in the takedown of said fascist. And that's just what YouTube has done. They've very non-fascistly taken down a video of Maloney from 2019 where she was speaking out against globalist elites. But unfortunately, YouTube couldn't take the heat in the kitchen from the backlash of all the people. So they backtracked and reinstated the video saying they had taken the video down by mistake. Just a happy accident. After all social media sites have banned the equally far-right Trump and took down countless videos from voices on the right, as well as banning countless creators on the right, we've yet to receive a single report of a leftist politician having even one video accidentally taken down. But with meticulous algorithms and censorship protocols that are deliberately programmed, we understand how mistakes like Maloney's video being accidentally taken down can happen. But it gets better. Biden has suggested that Maloney being elected via a fair democratic election is a threat to democracy. That's apparently how his mind sees elections. Therefore, may we remind you that by the big tech powers vested in his crippled hands, you are not allowed to question elections. 
because the free speech that would allow you to do so is just as big of a threat to democracies as democratic elections are. And as Biden, big tech, and the media all have eyebrows raised about the far-right fascist Georgia Maloney, here's what her political opponent had to say about her being a fascist who's threatening democracy. Personally, frankly speaking, I was against Georgia Maloney, so I, I'm not the best friend that we grew up together in politics, but we were, we, we are, and will be rival always. At the same time, I think that is not a danger for Italian democracy. Uh, she is uh, my rival, I, I'm rival, we will continue to uh, fight each other, but the ideas are now there is a risk of fascism in Italy is absolutely a fake news. Mm. She won election, particularly because populism a lot of times won in Italy. Obviously, he's spreading lies by accusing us of spreading lies about her. We wouldn't do that. I mean, if anyone had motive to lie about Maloney, it would be her political opponent. I mean, like, he would just want to make her look good, right? Well, technically, based on who controls us, the very useful idiots, we would be her political opponent. But let's leave the deep state out of this. As the trusted media who you outsource your thinking to, we can tell you with absolute fact that a woman has no business being empowered to the point where she's elected to the highest office in her country. Unless she goes along with what the men around her tell her to do, like we do here because we stand for equality. I just wish Italy could learn a lesson from Iran. On the topic of big tech silencing inconvenient voices, the popular freedom lover's voice of Russell Brand is now in the crosshairs of their sniper rifle. His popular YouTube channel with almost 6 million subscribers recently received a lifetime warning from YouTube. What's the crime? Well, Brand committed a wrong speak for using words to discuss Joe Rogan's favorite horse dewormer. The medication is unfortunately no longer under patent and therefore isn't profitable. Thus, speech about it is no longer permitted for reasons that are obviously in your best interest. Brand discussed the NIH's consideration of the horse medication with a few details being inaccurate regarding the NIH's classification of it. Brand later identified the errors and made a video owning his mistakes and correcting them. But the crimes against our pocketbook were already committed. So what followed was YouTube issuing a warning to Russell Brand, saying if there's another single community guidelines violation ever, then his YouTube channel with millions of subscribers will be permanently deleted. Should be easy for Brand to comply with, as the three simplest things in life to figure out are the income tax, quantum string theory, and community guidelines. But unfortunately, instead of falling in line and apologizing for his existence, just one week after YouTube's warning, Russell Brand launched his exclusive live stream news show, Stay Free, found exclusively on Rumble. Be sure not to check it out, because both Brand and Rumble appear to stand for the right to have free speech and open discussion, both principal factors that threaten our democracy, according to us. Now let's switch gears from the untrustworthy voices of the people to the trustworthy voices of our politicians. At a recent event, President Biden proudly called on dead Congresswoman Jackie Walorski, Republican from Indiana. Yet in a shocking display of disrespect, the dead Congresswoman did not respond to his call. Take a look. Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I don't think she was, she was going to be here to help make this a reality. If you're confused by this, or tempted to fascistly question President Biden's sharp cognitive abilities, don't. There's a perfectly good explanation. Leveraging the full wisdom of identity politics, President Biden simply identified the dead congresswoman as being alive. And as identity politics has it, just because he believed it didn't make it so yet you're pressured to believe it's so. And after the Congresswoman's death last month, President Biden released the following statement. Jill and I are shocked and saddened by the death of Congresswoman Jackie Walorski of Indiana, along with two members of her staff in a car accident today in Indiana. In President Biden's defense of having knowledge of her death and then not knowing that knowledge, 
There's evidence that no one told President Biden that he released that statement. So how is he supposed to know what he said? After learning of her death a second time, but this time also learning that she's a Republican, President Biden is expected to release the following statement. I didn't know she was a Republican. I'm glad she's dead. No word yet if Biden will be informed of this statement of his. Moving along, Nancy Pelosi took a break from insider trading to make this equitable statement about migrants. We have a shortage of workers in our country, and you see even in Florida, some of the farmers and the growers saying, why are you shipping these uh, immigrants uh, up north? We need them to pick the crops down here. And for those who say politicians are never honest, she kind of proved them wrong there. Gavin Newsom, who looks to be positioning himself to run for dictator in 2024, recently got his hair gel all over a medical gag bill as he was signing it. The Assembly Bill 2098 that he signed into law will charge physicians and surgeons who challenge the consensus around <laughs> with professional misconduct. This is good because it's always in your best interest to have politicians treating your medical conditions rather than doctors. And the bill doesn't even make me curious about who's donating to his campaign for dictator. And in Arizona's gubernatorial race, Carrie Lake's opponent, Katie Hobbs, is refusing to debate her. Upon Hobbs' refusal, Carrie Lake launched her Ask Me Anything tour. On the tour, she's making numerous stops around Arizona, saying she's interviewing for a job. Governor and the people who are hiring her, the citizens, should be able to ask her anything. But her opponent Hobbs is facing criticism, being accused of running and hiding from voters because the weak and destructive policies that she stands for can't stand up to the scrutiny of questions. But we're pretty confident Hobbs has no fear of facing anyone's questions. Take a look. Hey, Secretary of State Hobbs. Uh, I was just wondering, why aren't you debating Terry Lake? Okay, because I mean, the people want to hear. So we were just kind of wondering. Okay, well, you have a good day, but you know, have fun being five points behind. Well, aside from that. And finally, World War III is coming your way. World War III is the long-awaited sequel to World War II. And much like all sequels brought to you by the establishment nowadays, World War III promises to be more woke and more inclusive than any other war, as everyone will be included. There's nowhere to go. And these factors are sure to make World War III suck just as much as all their other sequels. But what's the newest eminent danger that threatens to start World War III? Well, aside from the US sending tens of billions of dollars to Ukraine and arming them, Ukraine recently applied for an expedited acceptance into NATO. If accepted, that would automatically mean that whoever Ukraine is at war with, in this case Russia, all the other countries in NATO would instantly be at war with them as well, including the US. So what will determine if NATO accepts the Ukraine and the match is thrown into the gasoline that we're all standing in? Well, with Biden's ties to Ukraine through his business mogul son's business dealings that don't exist as evidenced on his laptop that also doesn't exist, some believe Biden will be pressured slash blackmailed into pushing for NATO to accept Ukraine. And if that happens, it effectively breaks a champagne bottle over the ship's hull, christening the start of World War III. But World War III has its positives and negatives. On one side, World War III could be the only thing that disrupts Klaus Schwab's globalist plans. On the other side, World War III could just be a part of Klaus Schwab's globalist plans. You get to decide which one's positive and which one's negative. And if the joys of World War III do fall upon us, what can you expect? Well, to quote Einstein, who would not be allowed on some parts of Berkeley's present day campus, I know not what weapons World War III will be fought with, but I know World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. Nukes, Einstein. Nukes are what it'll be fought with. That's it for tonight's news. Everything that will uphold a democracy are the very things that will destroy a democracy. So we've got to get rid of them. And just remember to say, that could never happen here. And other things that you would tell a frog that's sitting in a pot of water on its way to a boil. Tune in tomorrow night for another session of Mass Formation Psychosis, because we're not done with you yet. Good night.
Hey there, my friend. If you love freedom as much as I do, I would love to invite you to check out all the freedom-inspired designs in my shop, only at awakenwithjp.com. Stay free. Hi, I'm JP Sears, and I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Primal Life Organics and their LED light teeth whitening system. I love Primal Life Organics because I love America, and America loves white teeth. That's what our country's founded on, kind of. Our founding fathers said, you have the right to be ugly. They also said you have the right to be beautiful. And studies show people with whiter teeth are always perceived to be more beautiful. But not just that. Studies also show that people with whiter teeth are way more successful in dating situations and they're more successful in business situations where the studies show they're more likely to be hired for their dream job and earn a higher salary. Nothing's more American than that. Communists tend to have bad teeth. Think about that. The Primal Life Organics Teeth Whitening System works using an LED light mouthpiece, which helps whiten your teeth. And along with that, uses a food grade teeth whitening gel, which shockingly helps whiten your teeth. And the best part is it does all this without harmful chemicals and peroxides that other teeth whitening products use that can actually damage and denature your teeth and your health. So if you want white teeth and damaged health, go ahead and use another system. But if you want white teeth and good health, my Life Organics is for you. One of the surprising things I found about whitening my smile was my self-esteem went up. It's like I, I just felt better about myself. And if you want to boost your self-esteem and your confidence while having a wider smile doing it, then check out Primal Life Organics Teeth Whitening System only at naturalteethwhiteners.com slash JP. By the way, at that link, you get a full 60% off, which is also pretty American.